What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here bringing you Splinterlands content daily. We also stream over on Twitch at This Is After Sound, so come by and say hello. All right, this is going to be a Splinterlands adjacent video, although we will look at the price of SPS. Now, before we even dive in here, I'm recording this on Sunday night, the 20th of February, 2022. And uh, Bitcoin has once again taken a massive dump this weekend. So we are seeing it now down in the 38,000 range, uh, up from the recent high of about 44. You know, I I'm, I would love to be able to watch this video in like five years when Bitcoin is like a million dollars and be like, yeah, Bitcoin, Bitcoin took a massive dump from 44 to 38. Uh, sorry, that's just what's running through my head was the idea that it, it's fun for me to record these now because who knows where we'll be in the future. And it'll be like one of those tweets where it's just like, oh, man, I wish I hadn't sold my Bitcoin when they hit 30 cents because now they're eight dollars. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, I wish I knew what a Bitcoin was back then. Okay. That aside, sorry for the uh, for the little uh, derailment there. So Bitcoin took a massive dump. We are seeing the market somewhat correct. Now, the only thing I have to say about SPS specifically for the, the purposes of this video is I'm surprised that SPS is actually retaining a little bit more value or holding its ground uh, a little bit more than, uh, than the rest of the market, it seems. Uh, we're sitting above 13 cents, almost at that 13 and a half cent range. And um, I don't, is this the Waka effect? I don't know. Uh, it could be, though, because as we know, there is now more and more utility coming into the Splinterlands ecosystem via vouchers and SPS. So that's an interesting thing to see, which got me thinking, and I've been thinking about this for a while, but I was actually looking at specific numbers uh, yesterday. What what does this do for Hive? Because in a recent ma uh, in a recent interaction on the Mav chat, uh, Cryptomancer was saying that there are no no intentions or no plans for Splinterlands to go onto its own blockchain. We're probably going to stay on the Hive blockchain. It's been good and it serves a purpose, and it would be just too much of a headache to go off of it. Because there was some speculation that maybe Splinterlands would be going on its own blockchain and try to decentralize its itself that way. That doesn't seem like it's happening. Uh, obviously, nothing is confirmed and nothing is ever set in stone. But since we are so closely tied to Hive, I've been trying to learn a little bit more about Hive uh, in general because of the fact that Splinterlands is probably one of the biggest assets within Hive. And you can see this very clearly when we go to, for example, Hive Engine. Uh, we'll see the market here for Hive Engine specifically. And by volume, the top coins are going to be DEC, SPS, Chaos Packs, and Vouchers. Oh, and then Plots. So like literally the top five are all Splinterlands assets that are dominating this market. So I was thinking about, well, I was thinking about one main thing. Is Splinterlands, or well, let me put it this way. Is Hive, which I'm still learning about, but is Hive big enough to put Splinterlands on the map or vice versa? Is Splinterlands going to be the thing that potentially puts Hive on the map? Now, as you've seen from some of the other videos that I've done, some of the other games that I've covered, there is a very budding and and uh, I don't want to say thriving, but definitely uh, an exciting ecosystem uh, of games that are popping up across the Hive ecosystem and across the Hive blockchain. I cover Rising Star here. I've covered Decrops a little bit. Hash Kings is another one that looks interesting. Now, these are all Hive-specific games, or at least they started on Hive or have a foot uh, a foothold in Hive. And um, I guess one of the things that is interesting to me is if Splinterlands is the game, or maybe there's another game that comes along that could potentially take Hive to the next level, what, what does that look like? Now, I'm not necessarily invested in Hive. I don't own Hive tokens. I don't sit on Hive tokens. I do have some powered up for resource credits and through the blogging that I do on Peak D, which I highly recommend everyone does, um, you know, I have some Hive stored up that way, which at, at this point seems like it's too difficult to take out. Because I think if I power down, it's going to take like literally three months for me to receive that Hive. So anything can happen in those three months. I'm just going to let it stack up and stake. Because I think there's a little bit of an earning when you uh, when you power it up. It's, it's essentially staking at that point. So I'm looking at Hive here. And one of the things that was interesting to me, right, because there was a discussion in the math chat yesterday about Hive versus Ethereum. Now, I am still 
an Ethereum bull. Don't get me wrong. It's hard. It's going to be hard to topple one of the top dogs. Uh, Ethereum has a lot of competitors, and yet it is still the number one decentralized kind of application figures. I'm not, I'm not counting Bitcoin. I'm just saying as a DeFi platform. And uh, actually, DeFi is not the right word. As a decentralized application platform, Ethereum still, still seems to be uh, at the top. I, I don't even know why I said it still seems to be. Is still at the top. Uh, and you can see by market cap, there's about 300 thousand uh, I'm sorry 300 billion dollars of uh, within its market cap the next closest one uh, not including any of the stable coins is going to be BNB which is at 60 billion uh, in terms of market cap so that's like less than one fifth and then I know you know Solana had a nice run Cardano had a nice run earlier uh, where was the other one Avalanche had a nice run earlier even Terra Luna had a nice run earlier, but none of them have come close to at least having the same kind of value that Ethereum does. So it got me thinking, okay, where's Hive, where's Hive currently at? And is there a potential opportunity play here? Now, I'm going to say this on the front end, and I'll remind you all in the back. Uh, at the end of the video, this is not financial advice. I'm not even investing in this. I'm just curious to see what kind of return there would potentially be if Hive were to become as popular as some of these other chains. So we are currently sitting at a 300, I'm going to round up here, $350 million market cap. Uh, and like I said, we were just comparing it to the, the billion and tens of billion dollar market caps out here. So here's what I'm looking at. Okay. And I uh, you got a little preview of the math there. But if we were to say ever reach Ethereum's market cap, which I don't, I don't think, not, not, not in any way, shape, or form in the near future. But if we were to reach Ethereum's market cap, it'd be almost like a 900x, which is, which is kind of insane. So if you're holding any hive, maybe you can hope for that. But I was looking at some of the other chains that are now becoming popular for the games that are being built upon them. So ones like Solana or Avalanche. And these are sitting in roughly the 30 billion for Solana or 20 billion for Avalanche. Well, I'm going to be even more conservative than that and say, okay, what if we get to like half of Avalanche? 10 billion divided by that 350 million roughly. That's a 28x. If Hive were to get into the, well, where, where would 20, where would that put us? 10, 10 billion dollar range. That would put us in the top 20 coins. Um, and when I say us, I'm talking about Hive, not SPS. So again, it's, it's an interesting thought experiment. And now I'm very closely watching to see how a game like Splinterlands and how some of these other games attract attention because Hive is not as popular as a lot of these other chains. Uh, there is so much hype when it comes to a lot of the other L1s. Uh, like I said, so la layer ones like Solana, Avalanche, Polkadot, Terra, Cardano. Uh, I mean, even Binance Smart Chain. Obviously, Binance is, you know, <laughs> they're technically number three when you're not counting the stable coins in terms of overall market cap. And they're number three by a good amount too. 64 billion. And the next one is going to be XRP at 37 billion. So again, I don't know what happens with Hive necessarily, but I do have a lot of con conviction with Splinterlands or in Splinterlands and the team to deliver. And looking at things like the Imagine Dragons partnership, the Waka Spirit Blade, again, in the grand scheme of things, when you're looking at crypto overall, yeah, you have like a list, a the A list of the A list, like Tom Brady ta doing ads with like crypto.com or things like that. So for 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 Splinterland specifically to be starting to get into that arena where we will hopefully have some kind of mainstream appeal with a list artists who knows what ends uh, what what might end up coming down the line is that something that like I said by extension could put Hive on the map now I'm not saying sell all your SPS for Hive I'm not saying sell anything for Hive I'm just saying I was looking at the Hive blockchain and wondering which one would have a bigger impact on the other, SPS on Hive or Hive on SPS? Um, and, you know, Hive, Hive made a run a little bit earlier this year. Actually, let's go to that for a second. And this, I think, was happening during the, let's go ahead and I'm going to put the one year in. So this was in November. So there was a lot of the gaming and metaverse talk happening at that time. Splinterlands and uh, SPS was actually somewhat already on its decline from the uh, the all-time high that we reached in, 
well, actually, it wasn't the, it wasn't the official all time high, but the recent high that we we got right before the Chaos Legion presale. So Hive did a pretty decent run at this point, hitting almost three dollars. I'm trying to see. Oh, there was an all time high. So on the daily, they didn't close it at over three dollars, but it does seem like we did have uh, three dollars and forty one cents was the recorded high. So that is what more than three x where we are now. So again, it's it's something that is of interest to me because the Splinterlands team is going to continue developing this game. And other games like Rising Star are are seeming to gain popularity, especially w- amongst you know some of the other uh, Splinterlands players. And then you have, like I said, Decrops is something that's of interest to me. I've been told about several other games. And I know, like, I mean, I'm not... I'm trying to cover as many games as I can, but be authentic about what I'm covering and only covering stuff that I'm actually interested in. But there's, there is a slew of other projects on the Hive blockchain that are interesting. So as we maybe go into a bear market or maybe go into a bear trend, which, you know, at some point hopefully we'll, we'll break out of, again, I'm not saying that this is, we could be going, we could be going into a bear market that won't see any kind of uptrend until 2025. So be prepared for that. I'm looking at this long term and I'm just trying to think, well, is Splinterlands enough to carry Hive or vice versa? Is Hive enough to carry Splinterlands? At this at this point, I actually feel it is it is the the former, right? Splinterlands is doing so much awesome stuff that it may lead the pack for Hive. And if we can bring more and more people into the ecosystem, then Hive as a whole might grow. So again, none of this financial advice. I'm not even buying any Hive. I'm just going to continue to... Um, post on on uh, peak d and and earn some some passive hive that way but aside from that it's it's more so just an interesting thought experiment about how high hive can get right because even 28 30x to get to a 10 billion dollar market cap similar to where avalanche is or sorry at the halfway point of where avalanche is that could make things very interesting. And then all of a sudden, if we're talking about getting to a $20 billion market cap, which is where Avalanche is currently, that's a 60X. So fascinating stuff. Again, this is all speculation. There's nothing behind this. There's no TA. There's no magic leaves. There's nothing. I'm, I'm, again, I'm just running some numbers here and trying to trying to kind of parse out how I feel things will uh, impact one another when it comes to Splinterlands the game and then Hive the blockchain in which Splinterlands runs on. So if you have more information on on high on the Hive ecosystem or have been around in this space longer, would love to hear from you. So definitely let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this. If you are a huge Hive bull, uh, or if you're a Hive bear, but maybe Splinterlands bull or vice versa, whatever the case is, would love to hear from you guys and uh, continue the conversation in the comments below. So have an amazing rest of your day. I will catch you all in the next video, and I will see you around the game. Take care.